Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of Code Emporium, where we're going to talk about random variables. Random variables is a super important concept in probability theory and thus machine learning, too. So we're going to take a look at breaking this video into three parts. So we're going to talk about some intuition, followed by a mathematical definition, and then we're going to walk into some applications and where you use random variables in machine learning. So let's get to it. So to motivate this entire discussion, let's start by conducting a fun experiment. This experiment involves you taking a pen and paper, walking outside to your main street, and just taking note of people who walk past you. And the information that you want to take into account is something like their hair color, as well as their approximate height. You know, just information that you don't have to go and ask them for. So let me just write a very quick table to document this information. All right, now we have our quick table. So let's start by looking at people. So let's say the first person that walks past us, we're gonna give them an ID of one. And let's say that their hair color is black. And their height is approximately, I don't know, we just eyeball it to be 165 centimeters, give or take. And oh, there's another person that walks past us. We'll give them an ID of two, and they have brown hair. And their height, as we eyeball it, is like 160 centimeters. And let's just keep watching these people pass us by for about 10 minutes. And every single time, you're going to make an entry in this table. So this table will be populated for about 10 minutes, and then we are done with our experiment. So congratulations, you conducted your first experiment. So um, what was the point of this? Well, now that you have some table of data, you can kind of start asking some questions, some very fun questions. So let's write them out. So a first question that I'm pretty interested in is how many people actually past you during this experiment. And let's say that for the sake of this argument, we had some, I don't know, 10 people that passed you. So we'll write that down here as an answer. Now, a second question that I'm pretty interested in is, how many people past you had blue hair? So we'll write that out as well. And I don't know, we live in a really hip part of town. So out of the 10 people that passed us, three of them had blue hair. So we'll write three people. And maybe a third question that we are gonna ask is, we have this height column. So what is the average height of the people who walked past you? And for this case, let's say, you know, if you take the average of all of these heights, you get 165.32 centimeters. So this is really cool. We basically conducted some experiment and we're able to ask questions about that experiment and each of these questions have answers that are numbers. We have some measurable quantities over here and random variables exactly allow us to do this. They help map some experiment outcomes to some measurable quantities. 
And when we have measurable quantities, well, we can perform some mathematics on it. You know, like we can do some probability theory. We can write, what is the probability that the number of people who passed you is, well, over six people, for example, and many other questions that we can derive from this as well. So this is why random variables are super important. And let's now take a look at a formal definition with some mathematics. Now, before moving forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Coursera. So videos like this are very mathematical and I can't include all the mathematical detail as I would. I talk about how this math is useful in machine learning, but if you do wanna know more about the rigorous mathematics itself, I do recommend certain courses on Coursera. So for example, you can check out the Mathematics for Machine Learning course by Imperial College of London, where they have three courses in a specialization they offer. On top of that, you can also check out an advanced statistics course by John Hopkins University. And I'll link all of these in the description down below of really interesting courses that I think are worth it. If you're not interested in just the mathematics and you want to go towards more in the practical machine learning and deep learning space with some integration of mathematics, I have also listed some recommended courses down in the description below. It helps you because you get a seven day free trial with amazing knowledge. And it also helps me because I do get some kickback and it supports me on this channel and helps me make more videos like this. So if you please, do like these videos, please do consider checking out the courses down in the description. I know you won't regret it. And with that, let's get back to the video. So random variables, something to note is that they are functions, right? That means that they take an input and they produce an output. And the input that they take is the outcome of an experiment. This will be the input to the random variable function. And these random variables produce as a result, a measurable quantity. So this is exactly what we mentioned before. But if we want to write this mathematically, we need to introduce some symbolic notation. So let's call the random variable x, because x is our friend, a big capital X over here. And it's a function, so it's going to take an input. And this input is going to be the outcome of an experiment. So in this case, the outcome of, let's say, the previous experiment was the number of people who passed us. So each of those questions, let's actually write random variables for them, starting with the number of people who passed us. Now this we know was 10 people. So we'll represent this with just a numeric quantity of 10. Similarly, let's define another random variable for the second question that we asked. So we'll call this one y. And we'll say this is going to be the number of people who passed you that had blue hair. And this, as we mentioned before, is going to be three people. And we'll just write the numeric quantity three, which is a measurable quantity. And now we're going to de define a third random variable, capital Z, as well, the third question that we asked, which is the average height of the people who passed us during the experiment. And this also, as we mentioned before, is going to be 165.32, which is a measurable quantity. Now, because like I mentioned before, we were able to map the outcome of an experiment over here, to a measurable quantity, we can now perform some mathematics on these quantities. And the mathematics might look something like, what is the probability, like I mentioned, that the number of people who passed us is at least six people. And we can now represent that so easily here with let's say P to be a probability distribution or a probability distribution function specifically, which takes into account the number of people who passed us is greater than or equal to six. And this is some mathematical quantity, which will probably lie between some zero and one, depending on how we define the math moving forward. But a really big utility, I hope, is very clear with these random variables, is that they help us do mathematics in general. They help us use probability theory. 
For now, I hope the concept of random variables is super clear, but if you're curious, let's move on to the final section, which shows how these random variables are used in machine learning. Alrighty, so now for this machine learning case, let's actually conduct another experiment that's more realistic when you're working in the world of machine learning. And that is going to Zillow.com and looking at house listings. So we're gonna randomly go to Zillow.com and just point out different houses. And then we'll make note of, well, these house prices. So let's define some random variables for each of the houses that we decide. So let's say we have a random variable called Y1, capital Y subscript one. Random variables are now functions. So it's going to take in as input the price of the first house that we choose. So I'm going to say price of house number one. Now this could be anything, right? It's a price after all, but what we actually observed was a specific price and that specific price is $677,000. So let's call it, let me change the color here, 677. Now let's say we define another random variable. We're going to call it Y2 and this is going to be the price of the second house that we just randomly select or randomly see. And in this case, the price of the second house is this $1.34 million house. So let's write that out. Price of house two. And this is going to be the 1.34 million, which we write out as 1,340 over here as a random variable. And similarly, we can do the same Again, in our experiment, we're going to now select a third house and we define a random variable Y3 to be the price of house number three. And this is going to be what we see here as 975. And so, this is kind of like what we did in the intuition section where we mapped the outcome of an experiment to some measurable quantity. And with this measurable quantity, we can now perform some mathematics. And a very key idea or core idea in machine learning is we want to do some form of parameter estimation. So let's say that we create a linear regression model and we have in linear regression some equation that might look like this. We have y is equal to, um, let's say, x3 theta 3 plus x2 theta 2 plus x1 theta 1 plus theta 0 as like an intercept term, and then some error, which we call epsilon. The X's are going to be some features that we add to the model. This could be like the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the square footage, like that could be X1, X2, and X3, for example. And the Y is going to be the price of the house. And these theta terms are going to be, well, they're the parameters that we want to estimate given some data or housing information. So in this specific example, like let's say that the training data is just three houses. We only observe three houses during our entire experiment. And what we want to do is we want to determine the values of theta that maximize the probability of seeing these houses. And that's kind of the core idea behind estimating parameters in a supervised learning context. So in mathematics, how we would write this out is, well, we want to determine the probability distribution function, which is going to be the joint probability distribution of, well, we want y1. What we observed y1 to be was 677. Similarly, what we observed y2 to be was 1,340. And similarly, what we observed y3 to be was 975. And because we observed these values, 
we want this probability to be as high as possible for whatever value of theta that we choose. And so we need to choose the value of theta that will essentially maximize this probability over here, this joint probability over here. And so this is actually a very core idea in machine learning that we call maximum likelihood estimation, which I have explained in another video, which I highly encourage you to check out. One thing that I want to make absolutely clear is that random variables here are functions. These little X's and Y's that you see here, these are not necessarily functions. They are going to be like scalar values, just values that are unknown to us at this time. And that is the huge distinction between these small variables that take on unknown scalar values and random variables, which are functions that can take on a multitude of values. So in the next video, we're going to walk through the types of random variables. Like what are the types of values that Y can see? That is, it's going to be a discrete random variable and continuous random variable. And then also go into probability distribution functions, their types depending on the random variables. And then we're going to keep exploring machine learning mathematically. So if you are kind of interested in this math and want to learn more about machine learning, please do consider subscribing and also checking out my Medium page because now I'm writing on Medium and a lot of the core ideas that are in these videos are now going to be published as blog posts on Medium. So please do check it out. And thank you all so much for watching. I will see you very soon with another video. Bye-bye.